Physics students, good afternoon. Mr. Fugan here. Uh, in this video today, we're going to be looking at uh, what we call a heat transfer rate, something we've been going over uh, in class the past couple of weeks, a uh, measurement of energy moving through a material in a given amount of time. Uh, this video is specifically geared towards homework number 10, which covers over some problems on heat transfer rates uh, through different materials. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at the second of four problems. The problem statement, uh, I'm going to read, and then we will get started. So it says this, the brick wall of thermal conductivity 0.51 watts per meter degree Celsius of a building has dimensions of 2.6 meters by 16 meters and is 12 centimeters thick. How much heat flows through the wall in a 12.9 hour period when the average inside and outside temperatures are 20 degrees and 7 degrees respectively? Excuse me. Now, I believe we're asked to solve this uh, and present our answer in megajoules, so we'll be working through the problem and then uh, working on that conversion at the end of the problem. So, uh, for example, here we have a brick wall. Okay. So, we'll kind of draw a side view here. Okay. Here's our brick wall. Uh, we're told that the dimensions are, uh, I'm given 2.6 meters uh, by 16 meters. Okay. So, uh, we can assume that this is uh, some type of a rectangle. So. The area of our material, 2.6 meters by 16 meters. Okay. We're also told the material is about 12 centimeters thick. So the length that our heat's going to be traveling, or the thickness of our wall, is 12 centimeters. I'm going to go ahead and convert that to meters. That way, when I plug it into our equation for heat transfer, we're in the units that we need. 0.12 meters. Now we're told that we have uh, the temperatures inside and outside of the wall are 20 degrees and 7 degrees. So say our cold temperature, 7 degrees Celsius, that's say this is our uh, outside, and then our hot temperature, heat hot, is 20 degrees Celsius, and that is say inside. We've talked about heat wants to move from hot to cold, so heat wants to move, hey, uh, through our brick wall, okay, and we want to see how much heat is passing in a given amount of time. Now we will also need our temperature difference, what we call delta T. So 20 degrees and 7 degrees, our difference between those two numbers is 13 degrees Celsius. And we're also told that our material, this brick, has a thermal conductivity of 0 0.51. So K is 0 0.51 watts per meter degrees Celsius. Because okay? of the units for our thermal conductivity, we need to make sure we're in meters and degrees Celsius in our other variables. Okay, so in this problem, we're asked to solve for the heat that's moving through our brick wall in a certain time period. Okay? So what we can do is we can use our heat transfer rate equation and the variables that we have to begin solving. So our heat transfer rate, uh, if we're dealing with conduction, which is what we'll deal with, is uh, conductivity times our contact area times our temperature difference divided by the length the heat passes or oftentimes the thickness. So uh, I'm going to multiply my area. I'm going to multiply to find my area. Uh, our wall was 2.6 meters by 16 meters. Those are already in the units that we need. That gives me 41.6 meters squared. And just so that I make sure to plug that value into our equation correctly. So now I'm just going to take the variables that we have, plug them into our equation for heat transfer, and then we'll deal with that time value right afterward. So our thermal conductivity, 0.51 watts per meter degree Celsius. Our contact area, we just determined 41.6 meters squared. And our temperature difference was 13 degrees Celsius. Did I say that correctly? Yes, 20 and 7, okay. So those are our variables in the numerator. And we'll divide by the length of our, <coughs> the length that our heat's passing through our thickness, which was 12 centimeters, or 0 0.12 meters. So we've identified all of our variables. Let's go ahead and plug these values in, see what we come up with. So our thermal conductivity, 0.51, times our contact area, 41.6, times our temperature difference, 13 degrees. And then we'll divide by <coughs> the length of our wall, or, or the the length the heat's passing, the thickness of our wall. Okay. And, uh, and when we do that, I get right at about 2,298. <clears throat> Talk about the unit here. 2,000, 
298.4. And as, as we've been working through our heat transfer rate, remember, this is a measurement of heat moving in a given amount of time. Okay? So in our equation, the meters and degrees Celsius will cancel out. We'll be left with watts or joules per second. And that per second is important because we're asked for the heat passing through in a set amount of time here. Okay? So and now that we have this value, we need to convert it to the time value that we're provided with. So 2,289 joules per second. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that to joules per hour, and then I'm going to multiply by the time value that we're given, 12.9 hours, to figure out the total amount of joules we have passing in that time period. So uh, I can take seconds and convert that to minutes. So we can say 60 seconds is equal to one minute. And then I can convert uh, and say 60 minutes is equivalent to one hour. And we can also kind of do that directly saying uh, 3,600 seconds is one hour, that's fine. So I'm gonna take this value, multiply by 60, and then multiply by 60 again. And it's gonna give us, again, a, a large number because now we're dealing with not a joules per second, but joules per hour. So we're gonna have more energy flowing over a larger period of time. I get yeah, about 8 million, 274,000, 240, and the units on this number are a little bit different than what we're used to. This is joules per hour, because our question is asking us how much, uh, <coughs> how much heat moves through this brick wall in this period of time. Okay. So now that we're in joules per hour, we're just gonna take our time value and multiply by our rate. So I'll take this number here, we'll bring it down. I've got 8,274,240 joules moving through our wall per hour. And we're going to multiply by 12.9 hours. So I'll take this number, multiply by 12.9. Now, you can also go through this problem. You can convert the 12.9 hours to seconds and multiply that by our rate in joules per second. That's fine. I just chose to do the problem this way. But you can solve it uh, that way if that's more comfortable for you. So when I multiply these values together, I'm going to get something pretty large. Okay? I'm just going to go ahead and write it all the way out. It's like 1... 0-6-7-3-7-6-9-6. So that would be 106 billion, 737, excuse me, 106,737,696 joules in this time interval. Now, I believe the question is asking us to present this in units of megajoules. A mega is not a prefix that we've used a lot in this class, but we have touched on it just a bit. And it's a, uh, to get to the mega prefix, we uh, move over a power of 10 to the sixth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide this number a, by 1 e to the sixth. A, so remember that 1 e to the sixth is the same as 10 to the sixth power. So we'll divide by 1, e to the 6th. That's going to give me a value of 106.74 mega joules. And this one's going to look like Michael Jordan there, but the capital M is for mega and the J is for joule. And, uh, if that's a little bit confusing to you, we can always move our decimal six places over, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and get the same result. And it's just like converting to uh, the kilo prefix or the centi or the milli prefix. Uh, it's just a, a different scale that we use to represent this number. So uh, if I check our answer heat, see if we're correct, 106.74, which is right where we are. So uh, in this problem, we're using that same idea of heat transfer rate, energy moving per time. Uh, but now we're just looking at how much energy is moving in a specific set amount of time, that 12.9 hours. So hopefully that will get you going in the right direction on this problem. Remember, your numbers are going to look a little bit different than mine, but the process will remain the same. Okay, good luck.